everyone, and welcome to the great Fiamaca Science Adventure. You are about to embark on a journey to explore the world of nature and science with some of my friends at Cuyamaca Outdoor School. All you need for this trip is a curious mind. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Look, up there in the sky, it's a bird. No, it's a plant. It's Art Man. Hi, I'm Artman. I'm here under this tree doing one of my favorite things, which is nature journaling. Scientists use nature journaling to remember interesting things they come across, to get a closer look at specimens, or to just relax. As long as you have a writing utensil, nature journaling is something that you can do anywhere. Now I'm going to share some tips with you that helped me and my scientist friends get started. I went on a great hike this morning, and as I was hiking through the meadow, I found these pretty flowers. So I took a scientific specimen so I can observe it and I can start drawing it. So here it is. I'm gonna bring it close to the camera. Maybe you can see it. So when we start drawing our specimen, if it's a plant, try not to draw what you think a plant looks like. Draw the plant that you see. So I'm gonna start with some lines and some shapes. So this plant, I notice it's one big line. So it starts with one big line, and at the top, I see a whole bunch of small ovals. So I'm gonna draw all of the ovals I see. Remember, nature drilling is supposed to be quick. Don't worry about having those perfect lines just yet. You can always go back later in the hike or when you get home and perfect some of those lines. And at the bottom, all these leaves are kind of wrapping around the stem, but it's still kind of staying in that perfect line. And I notice there's some little fuzzies at the top of the ovals. And there we go. When scientists are out in the field and they're journaling, they use the three languages of science, which is words, pictures, and numbers. These help turn a pretty drawing into a useful piece of scientific data. So now I don't have colors with me, but I see some really pretty yellows. So I'm gonna go ahead and use writing to make a note of that. So flowers are a bright kind of golden yellow and the green on these leaves is real interesting. So I wanna make a note of that. It's kind of a a sagey gray green and because I have my specimen here I can actually touch it and I can feel it and I can make note of how that feels so the leaves are kind of fuzzy and soft the stems kind of kind of crunchy crunchy stem and the flowers hmm interesting they feel kind of wet kind of moist kind of cold flowers cold slash wet. A good way to use numbers is to measure how big your specimen might be. Because I have a ruler on the side of my journal, I'm going to use that to measure this plant specimen. My ruler doesn't reach all the way, so I'm going to put my pencil where it stops and move it again. So my specimen is 8 inches plus 4 inches, so that's about 12 inches. So I'm going to make a note of that in my journal next to my drawing. I'm also going to use numbers to count how many leaves I see. So there's 13 main leaves, and then these smaller leaves that wrap around the stem, there's also 13, 13 smaller leaves. Remember, when you're nature journaling, it's important to make scientific observations. The three I like to use are, I notice, I wonder, and this reminds me of. I notice the leaves get smaller as they go up the stem. I wonder how big these flowers get. I wonder why they're yellow. This reminds me of a sparkler on the 4th of July. Now we've collected data by doing our scientific drawing. Sometimes when you're hiking, you might come across an animal. You can use these same techniques to record what you're seeing. This bird's blue tail reminded me of blueberries and denim. For this bird, I wondered, why is its head striped? And why is it so small? If you happen to have color pencils or watercolors with you on trail, those are good mediums to use to quickly color the colors that you're seeing for the specimen that you're studying. Now that you know the basics of nature journaling, go out, find something that interests you, and give it a shot.
Real science on the trail. Cool. I'm so ready. Hey, teacher. Can we go down to the water? It looks awesome. Oh, absolutely. We just have to be really careful because the rocks by the water can be really slippery. Okay. Mira. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at this green stuff. This water is so cold. Whoa. Check out these bugs. I wonder why these rocks are so smooth. Wow. Do you think you can drink this water? This reminds me of the carpet in my grandma's living room. What is that? Did you guys hear that noise? No, over there. I think something's coming this way. Is it a mountain lion? Wow! Oh, hello everyone. What are you guys up to over there? We're doing science. <laughs> That's awesome, me too. I'm a stream ecologist. A bee optometrist? No, a stream ecologist. I study life in and around the waterways. But you don't look like a scientist. Why not? Because I'm what a scientist looks like. But I look like that too. So if you all are scientists, what are you studying? Oh, we're not scientists. We're just out exploring. I mean, look how cold the water is. And look at all the bugs I caught. I wondered why the rock is so smooth. And this reminds me of my grandma's carpet. That's awesome. You are being scientists. You're making observations. You're asking questions and you've made connections. So you are scientists. Whoa, wow, so cool. Hey, can you teach us more about how to be a scientist? Yeah, what do you guys want to study? How about these plants that are growing out of the water? That's so weird. Yeah, let's go ahead and start by collecting some data. Collecting data is gathering information to learn more about our subject. So we can take a sample of the plant in the water and then we can identify them. Well, I want to know what these bugs in the water are. Well, you can use your net to collect one of the bugs and then we can put it in this little jar to take a closer look at it. Very cool, and we have some field guides we can use to help identify them. Awesome, now that you've collected some data, we want to ask some questions. What were you wondering about your specimens? I wonder how this plant can be growing in the water without drowning. ¿Qué come este insecto? I wonder what this eats. Well, why don't we make a hypothesis? What do you think the answer to your question is? Well, maybe this insect eats the other insects in the water. Maybe this plant uses its leaves outside the water to breathe, like a snorkel. Now that you have made observations, asked some questions, collected data, and formed hypotheses, you can use your field guides to research and, research and analyze your findings so that you can share with other scientists around you. Let's take some time to document our findings in our journals. Drawing in my journal using the three languages of science. Words, pictures, numbers. It's so awesome. Look at these drawings. They're so good and there's so much information. to head back to camp for lunchtime. It was good meeting you all. Good luck with your science projects. 
Thank you. Muchas gracias. I can't wait to identify my plant back at camp. Whoa, what do you got in your journal? I drew this plant from yesterday. Oh yeah, I drew a water strider. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, after uh, after doing some research, I discovered that the water strider actually eats <laughs> other insects in the water. My hypothesis was correct. That's so cool. I learned that the plants actually can breathe above water through their leaves, and they can even get carbon dioxide from in the water sometimes. Huh. What's going on, fellow students? Hi. Hi. What happened to your hair? I got a haircut. Whoa, what are you doing? That looks so cool. We're sharing our scientific findings from yesterday. Whoa, that sounds so cool. I want to do that. We'll teach you. We can teach you how to be a scientist. You two did such an awesome job with your study yesterday. Would you like to join us? Sure. Now let's see if you three can handle this. Science change. Using the scientific practices we learned yesterday, let's try to take a closer look and observe some different specimens. Let's do it! Here are three biofacts. These come from a real animal. Your mission is to choose one of these to study closely. Awesome, I choose that one. Remember, scientists always record their observations. Start by looking at your chosen object and thinking like a scientist. What do you notice about it? What do you wonder about it? Does it remind you of anything you've seen before? I notice mine is mostly round but kind of sharp at one end. It also has two big <coughs> holes in the front. Great observation. I noticed that this one has so many different colors, I wonder why. That's a great question. This reminds me of the claw game at the fair. Take a few moments to collect data by sketching your specimen. Scientists often draw what they're studying so they can look back on it later, share it with other scientists, or use it as data. That's why it's so important to include as much information as possible. Remember the three languages of science. Who was that? Oh, that's Artman. He taught us to use words, pictures, and numbers when we're nature journaling. Whoa, cool. I've always wanted to be better at drawing. I think I'm done. Scientists always communicate findings with each other too. Why don't you guys take a moment to share with each other what you recorded? Super proud of my picture. I've just been, I just love it. I love my picture. Challenge complete. I wonder what animal these came from. I think I know. Binoculars are a really important scientific tool. 
to help us get a closer look at an animal while keeping a safe distance and making sure we don't disturb them. Let's give them a try, see what we can find. Oh, look, an animal. I think it's a scientist. Hello there. Hey, hi. We met a scientist like you the other day. Are you, are you a scientist? I sure am. How did you know? You're wearing hiking boots and protective clothing, and you're using scientific equipment. Wow, you guys are really good observers. So, what do you study? I'm an ornithologist. A corn enthusiast? No, an ornithologist, or a person who studies birds. In other words, a bird scientist. Oh, that makes more sense. Do you all want to help me? I'm looking for a western screech owl. Look, there's one. All right, let's think like scientists and first observe carefully. Western screech owls live in oak woodlands and their feather patterns camouflage with oak bark. Their legs are very short, often hidden in their feathers. It's about the size of a jar of peanut butter. Mmm, peanut butter. That doesn't look like a screech owl. It doesn't have that camouflage pattern. Its wings are so light colored. And it's got long legs. And it's just so big. Those look just like the feet on the biofact yesterday. Yeah, those feet are structures called talons that help the bird catch and kill its prey. This is too good. We gotta record this in our journals. That's a great idea. Let's make a list of the patterns we observe, as well as their structures and their functions. Remember to look for patterns. That looks a lot like the wing I drew yesterday. Did you know that owls have silent flight? The structure that helps them do that is this fringe on the edge of their wing feathers. What do you think is the function of silent flight? How do you think it helps the owl survive? So that the prey does not hear them coming. Exactly. Now look at the owl's head. What structures do you notice? That sharp beak. I bet it helps them eat their prey. Wow, you two are amazing scientists. What patterns do you notice? I notice that the face is heart-shaped. I also notice the spots on the owl's belly. Using this field guide and the data we've collected, can you conclude which species of owl we are observing? It's a barn owl! I knew it! That was awesome! Can we keep looking for the screech owl? Yeah! Let's go! Whoa! hear that? That sounds like a screech owl. How do you know? Well, after some practice, you can start to recognize bird sounds. And you can use your hearing as an observation tool and hear the birds before you see them. There it is. Nice. Look closely at its patterns and structures to help identify the bird. The patterns and colors on its feathers remind me of tree bark. I can barely see its feet, but they have sharp structures on it, like the barn owls. It has a round body the size of a... A jar of peanut butter. We did it! We found a screech owl. But why are we looking for screech owls anyways? We are doing a research project studying screech owl populations. We had a fire in Cuyamaca Rancho State Park, where your camp is, and we're studying how well they're recovering since the fire. So you two really contributed to this project. 
Wow, we really are scientists. Thank you for joining us on the Great Cuyamaca Science Adventure. And now it's your turn to get outside in nature and think like a scientist. Nature is everywhere. It can be near the sidewalk, outside your window, in your backyard, or at a park nearby. Follow your curiosity and keep exploring. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.